If you ever wonder how people keep track of everything that they have to do at work, let me show you what I started doing and it's made such a difference. The first section is my planned tasks, which I'm aware of at the beginning of the week. Next is my unplanned tasks, and these are tasks that get added to my workload throughout the week. Next, I have recurring tasks that need to be completed each week. And then I have the tasks that are unable to be completed, as well as all the follow-ups that need to occur. To track my progress, I have a drop-down where I can easily select done, pending, not started, or next week, and I also change the format depending on the status. I can set the priority to high, medium, low, or recurring. And I also have a value add column. So this is good for promotions and to keep track of the value that you bring to the company. And it's also good when you want to redo your resume. I have it set where each section is numbered and it updates automatically when you create a new task. It also counts how many tasks have been completed and allows you to change the date by just double clicking on it to select the next week. So when I have a task added to my workload, I insert a row in the unplanned task section. And then I add a description of the task to remind myself what to do. The progress slash status is pretty much always not started to begin with. And then you'll select the priority and put the value add. And now that the task is added, you can see that the number automatically populated. And if you want to adjust the rows, you can drag them up and the number will shift with it. And once I start the task, I'll change that to pending and you'll see the text turn green. And then once I'm done, I'll change it to done and the text will be crossed out. So that's how I stay organized throughout the workday. The first thing we're going to do is add the data validation to get the date and the drop downs. For the date, you'll select C1, go to data, data validation, add rule, then use the drop down to select is valid date, hit done, and then exit out of that. And now when you duplicate the tracker to get ready for the next week, you can easily change the date by selecting the calendar. And now we're going to add the first drop down. So go ahead and select all the cells that are not a header in the progress slash status column. And then we'll go back up to data, then select data validation and select add rule. And then from here, you can see that we already have the drop down menu. So we can change the first one to done. And I like to select green. You can select whatever you want, Second one is pending, then select the color that you want. Add another item and put not started. Then I like to select blue, but you can select whatever color you want. And then the last one will be next week. And I like to select red because I'm not doing it this week, but you can select whatever color you want. And then you'll hit done. And then after exiting out of this, we'll go over to the column with priority and do the same exact thing that we did for progress slash status. I mean, select everything that's not a header. And yep, you guessed it, we're heading back up to data, then go into data validation and add rule. And since it defaults to drop down, we're in the right place. The first value I put is high and I select blue, but you can put whatever color you want. The second value I put is medium. I select orange, but you can select whatever value you want. After that, you'll add another item and then put low. I do yellow, but you can select whatever color you want. And the last thing is recurring. So this is everything that you'll set for if it happens week over week or month over month or however you want to set it up. You'll hit done and exit out of that. And now both the date and the drop downs are all set. To create the automatic numbering, we'll use the formula sequence and then count A. And then you'll select all the cells in column B for this section, including the blank. Then we'll copy that formula down to the next section. As you can see, it goes through B13. So we'll need to adjust the end formula to end at B14 to include the blank. After pasting, you'll see we get a reference error, and that's because we're trying to count too many rows. So we just need to adjust the end to B18, which is the blank in this section. And when you paste it into the next section, you'll see that it won't give you an error, but it is trying to number a blank cell. So we'll just need to adjust the range to end at the blank in this section, which is B21. And then we'll paste the formula into the last section, and we'll change the end of the range to just read B without any rows, and that will apply it to the rest of the spreadsheet. And now we'll add the completed counters. So you'll enter the formula count if. And the range will be all of column C, so you can select the entire column by clicking on the letter C, which is the column header, and then we'll type the word done with parentheses around it. And now all the formulas are set up. The last step to create the tracker is to add the conditional formatting to column B. Then we'll select the range starting in B3, and then we'll drag that down. Then we'll go up top to click format, then conditional formatting. And we'll use the drop down to select custom formula is, and the formula will be equals C3 equals the word done in parentheses. And after that, you'll set up the formatting. I like to have no background, a dark gray text, and then strike it out when it's done, and you'll hit done. Now you can either click add another rule, or you can click into the initial rule, and then click add another rule to duplicate it. And since we duplicated it, it's all set up, so we'll change the word done to pending. And then we'll set up the conditional formatting. So I take away the strikeout, change the font to green, and then make it bold. And then we'll do the same thing one more time. So you'll click into the rule, add another rule, and then we'll change pending to next week. And then we'll do the conditional formatting. For next week, I take away the bold, add a strikeout, and then I change the text to be red. And then once you save that, you can exit out of the conditional formatting. And now you can see once we select done, it will change the format. Same thing with pending and next week. And now your tracker is complete and ready to use. So now I'm going to show you how to use it as well as how to update it week over week.
When you have a new task, you'll go to the unplanned task section and then click on the row number of the blank row and select insert one row above. And since the numbering is automatic, you'll start by putting the task description, putting the status as well as the priority, and then putting the value add for this task. And now the task is in there so you don't forget about it later. When it's time to start working on it, you can change the status to pending. You can drag the row up to be next to the other pendings. When it's done, select done and drag it up to be next to done. One thing to note is if you drag something down to the end, a lot of times the number stays, but you can just delete that to return the automation. And since it's the end of the week, I'm going to get this task tracker set up for the next week. So anything I have not started yet, I'm going to change to next week. And then I'll go down to this week's tab and select duplicate. Then I'll drag that tab in front of the current week, then right click and rename to be the next week. And now that we're on the next week's tab, we can clean up our tasks. So I'll start with any planned tasks I did not get to and I'll copy that and paste it over the first row in the plan section. And then I'll go down to the unplanned section and I'll copy any of the tasks I did not complete and I'll paste that into the planned task section now that I know about them. And then anything that says next week, I'll go ahead and change the status back to not started. And then I'll select all the tasks in the unplanned section and delete them and delete all the rows except for the last one. Now you'll see an error message in column A where the tracker should be and that's because there's no values in column B to count. And if this bugs you like it does me, you can add this if error formula and this will make it blank unless there's a task in column B. Since the recurring tasks are the same week over week, we can change the status of these tasks back to not started. And then you can do the same thing for the other two sections. You can either delete anything that needs to be deleted or update the task if that's the case. And now everything is set up except for one last item and that's to double click on the date and change the date to the next week. Now we can go back to the previous tab and for the recurring task to create tracker for next week, we can mark that as done. So there you go, now you have your new task tracker and you know how to use it to stay organized at work. If you like this video, follow Shoots by Olin for more.